Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And today we're going to talk about food cravings, the cravings that you get um, and where they come from. Are, are they coming from um, some of the bacteria in your gut? Do they create food cravings? What's actually happening? And it's really, really interesting. So it's kind of like a power struggle inside the gut. So everybody has food cravings, but why do you have them? You know, everybody thinks, well, food cravings are normal, so there's not much we can do about them, but there's a lot you can do about them. And this is a time of change, a time to look at the way that we function in this world and do it differently than we ever did it before. So it's time to understand how to use your body as a tool to teach you and to help you it's not hard once you understand how to work with your body and your trillions of microbes. They were put inside of you for a reason and what a difference it can make when you understand why and how to make these changes. So how can tiny microbes, and remember we have trillions of these microscopic microbes, um, how can they, how do they change inside of us um, when you, when you crave uh, broccoli or for instance, or most people don't crave broccoli, um, but or why you crave chips? Why do you crave sugar? Why do you crave these things? So researchers at Althena Atkins and the University of San Francisco found that bacteria in the body can sway how you feel, and also you can tap into the nerve pathway that leads your stomach to your brain. The vagus nerve plays a major role in brain gut signaling. This nerve, it's really an important nerve too. It acts as a major highway in the brain-gut connection by connecting over 100 million neurons in this intricate nervous system to the medulla located at the base of the brain. So micros can produce neurotransmitters in the gut which affect the brain. And research has shown that therapy using a vagus nerve blockade can, mark, can lead to marked weight loss, while vagus nerve stimulation is known to trigger excessive eating. So... Many gut bacteria manufacture these special protein or peptides that are very similar to hormones like leptin, uh, ghrelin. These, these hormones regulate hunger. And humans and other animals have produced antibodies against these peptides. Um, the microbes can directly influence how you eat, and they do it through the peptides that mimic hunger hormones or indirectly through antibodies that can kind of mess with your appetite regulation. So not only can microbes tell your brain what to crave, but they can also change your taste receptors, making some foods seem more appealing than others. Microbes have a way to manipulate us into eating or not eating certain foods. So if you have a gut filled with microbes that depend on sugar, those microbes then would be under strong pressure to get you to eat more of what they depend on, potentially leading to cravings for foods like sugar. So, Okay, let's talk about things, why you crave certain foods. For instance, salt. Your microbes crave um, salty food like chips when your adrenal glands are overtaxed and cortisol is running high. And this process that happens requires a lot of sodium to keep the adrenals going. So the craving for salty food is a big sign that your adrenals need some support. Um, adrenals need lots of vitamin B and vitamin C. And guess what foods have a lot of B and C vitamins? And having those um, types of foods, like cultured foods, which have a lot of those, um, can help you overcome this. They have lots of B and lots of vitamin C, and that's cultured veggies, kefir. Um, kombucha has B. I don't think it has vitamin C, but it has B vitamins. All of these foods um, are crucial in helping supply you with B vitamins. And without these vitamins and minerals, you are really struggling and craving foods that are high in salt. Okay, sugar. Now, do you have a lot of microbes that are making sugar? One of the fastest ways to help this is to support, support your body with extra minerals and cultured foods. Often the first sign of out of control blood sugar level is a strong hunger response. Minerals, and especially minerals like magnesium, magnesium is huge for this. Um, and along with probiotic foods and probiotics are, are crucial to claiming, uh, calming down and bringing your gut back into balance. And eating sugar will make you crave sugar like crazy, and boy, don't I know that. It is true. 
It sets up a dopamine receptor in your brain that cries more, along with making sugar-loving microbes that start to demand you feed them more. Sugar can even change the expression of taste receptors, making certain foods taste better, while all the while releasing hunger-inducing hormones. And it's a hard battle to win if you keep eating that sugar. It can take about three days to calm down after you restrain from eating sugar for about three days. And adding cultured foods and lots of minerals like magnesium to your diet will be a huge help. I'm telling you, sugar is a huge culprit. Nothing affects me like it. It's it's a, one of the things I really try to stay away from because it has such a big effect on me. Now, the other one that a lot of people crave is fat. And different species of bacteria have been shown to have a preference for fat. For example, bacteroides have been shown to want specific fats. Now, all micros require a steady seam of substrates to grow and reproduce. And each one can have a preference for different food nutrients. But not all fats are created equal. Fats like olive oil, avocado, coconut oil, and grass-fed butters are some of the fats that have made a huge difference for me and my health. Um, things like hydronated fats, they are the worst for your body and should be avoided. It's okay to have fat in your diet, but just make sure you pick the good ones and keep it in balance with lots of prebiotic and probiotic foods. Now I want to talk about foods that change your food cravings. So let's go over a couple of the foods that can change your cravings to ones that bring about health and wellness. Nothing is more powerful than craving foods that love you back. There's just nothing like it. When you start craving things that you know will help your body, your body's always sending you messages. And if you're struggling with different ailments, then this is your body's cry for help. It's really a warning sign. It's not the enemy. It's just how your body talks to you. So here are some of the foods that can really help you change your food craving. Now, the first one I want to talk about is Elruderai yogurt. Elruderai yogurt has had a profound effect on cravings and appetite. It kind of surprised me how effective it was. And among the many powerful and life-changing effects of lactobacillus ruderi yogurt, um, it has one thing that it does that is very powerful, and it creates oxytocin levels to rise. Now, oxytocin is a hypothalamic gland hormone that does a lot. It has been shown to increase bone density, encourage feelings of empathy, has an anorexigemic effect, which means it can turn off appetite. If you've ever experienced those feelings of like really being in love, where you just don't care about eating anymore, that's coming from oxytocin. So every single morning I have El Ruderai yogurt made into a smoothie with some kefir. I used to always have something else with my kefir smoothies before El Ruderai, things like toast or eggs or something. But since I started adding El Ruderai to my diet and into my kefir smoothie, I literally feel so full every morning I can't do it. I want to do it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have some toast this morning. And I'm so full I can't eat it. I can't tell you how many times I have bounded out of bed, thought I'm going to have eggs and a smoothie this morning, and I always wind up just having my smoothie because I'm so full. Um, I even have been having a little of this El Ruderai yogurt over strawberries at night with some a drizzle of honey. It just makes me feel so happy. It's just crazy how much I love this yogurt. So is it the oxytocin creating the feelings of intense love for the yogurt? I don't know. But um, whatever it is, I don't want to stop the joy of eating it. Or And th it's really fun to make. And um, I can teach you how to do that. So I'm going to put the link description below and teach you how to make a yogurt if you'd like to. Because it's, it's an amazing food. Now kefir, which is a fermented milk or non-dairy fermented milk drink, is much stronger than yogurt. Because it's loaded with B and C vitamins and the kefir has over 50 plus beneficial strains. And this food helps you absorb nutrients from the other foods you eat with it. Now, combine some kefir with prebiotics like a like fruit smoothie and you'll quickly start building new microbes. And it's fast. This is where I really started from the very beginning with cultured foods. And it was what I benefit from the most. Because when I first tried kefir and after a month, I just wanted more cultured foods. So then I tried kombucha. And then a month later, I tried cultured vegetables and I was just hooked. And it really started to change my cravings. And then I wanted healthier foods. And I just, I never want to go back because I want to continue to feel as good as I do now. So I've been doing it for, oh gosh, decades because I love it so much and it's made me feel so good. Kombucha. Um, I love kombucha. Um, a glass of fermented tea a day will not only help feed your microbes, 
but help eliminate some harmful microbes that might be abiding in your gut. It powerfully assists the liver in detoxification, and you'll get some big help in changing your gut flora with kombucha. It will give you that special pick up in the afternoon or evening if you need that when you're, you know, your adrenal glands sometimes get low because you're tired. Kombucha is a great pick me up. Um, it can give your body just what it needs. It helps detoxify you. It's one of my most effective tools for eliminating food cravings. I'm telling you, if I have a glass of kombucha, I'm not hungry anymore. I just love it. It just does something to me. It just seems to satisfy whatever my body's needing and um, the food cravings go away. It's very, very powerful. And I have lots of um, things you can listen to on my podcast and I have lots of articles and I will link that below. Now, cultured veggies. They go a long way um, in helping your gut microbes change. They do a big sweep of your gut flora when they have the special bacteria that are in cultured vegetables. Lactobacillus plantarum is very powerful. It will support your adrenals, and I have had many, many, many people tell me that it helped them with eliminating food cravings, and even it helped with weight loss because it really is loaded with vitamin C that supports your immune system in a very powerful way. It's really important for allergy season. If you have seasonal allergies, you need that extra vitamin C and B, but you especially need the type that is in cultured vegetables. It is extremely powerful for that. And just a few spoonfuls can make all the difference and give your body what it needs. It helps you absorb more nutrients from the food you eat with it too. And I love that about cultured veggies. Um, it also keeps your hunger at bay and you just got to try and see for yourself what a difference it can make. And I can teach you how to make cultured vegetables. You're basically just chopping up vegetables, placing them in a jar, adding a culture and letting them do the work and ferment it. And the vitamin C goes through the roof. It goes from 60 milligrams to 600 milligrams in a cup of cultured veggies. It is powerful. It has a ton of V vitamins. And along with that, it has billions of probiotics. And you don't need a lot. You just need a spoonful. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is prebiotics. Now, prebiotics are very powerful weapons against food cravings, the harmful food cravings. Everybody knows that fruits and vegetables are good for you and your microbiome thrives on them. And prebiotics are fiber for your microbes. They are things like oh, nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables, um, any kind of like healthy grains. All of those things are fiber for the bacteria. They're not food for you. They're food for the bacteria, which makes it grow and multiply. And it is so effective in helping people. Um, really with changing over their cravings to healthy ones. For instance, juicing is all the rage right now. And did you know that the soluble fiber that's in the juice um, is what the microbes feed off? And it, it loves it. And that's why some ju juicing has helped so many people, because it feeds your microbiome. But you also find fibers that microbes love in foods such as berries, broccoli, leeks, kales, bananas, nuts, seeds, things like that is very, very powerful for your gut microbe. And it'll go a long way in changing your food cravings by adding more fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, salads, greens, all of those things that your body loves. And it flourishes on them. It produces anti-inflammatory properties, as does, does do culture foods. Culture foods actually do that more. Um, but it does change your food cravings in a very powerful way. Um, I have seen that so many times in my own family. I know whenever somebody's not having enough vegetables, my daughter especially, she'll say to me, Mom, will you make me some cauliflower broccoli soup? And within a day, she's completely changed in craving healthier foods. And the sulfur that's in the broccoli or the cauliflower really helps her to get back on track. And it happens with me too. A salad a day is an awesome thing to do. Apple a day is an awesome thing to do too. That will help feed your gut bacteria called acrobantia which will strengthen your gut lining. And it loves the peels of apples. And it's a very powerful weapon in changing your food cravings as well. So those are some of my suggestions, some of the things maybe that you didn't know were happening inside of you all the time. And you're just not a victim to having these cravings that you can't control. If you're craving things that you know aren't healthy for you, then there's a way to change that. And your gut bacteria will help you will help you restore those cravings, help balance your hormones, help create different hormones 
also send um, different um, microbes in your gut will grow and multiply, start craving things, and then you are at the mercy. Because a lot of the foods that we that are processed, that have additives, that have you know chemical compounds and like MSG, things like that, that you know that create cravings in the brain. They're designed for that, and um, they're not good for you. And they cause you to overeat, stimulate hormones that don't need to be stimulated, and then everything gets out of balance. So, changing the way you eat, lo loving the foods that you eat, and creating healthy alternatives is a key to eating more of them because your body will crave them for you, and you'll wind up having a healthier diet all around. So, thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk more next next week. But in the meantime, check out, see what you're craving, see what your body has been craving a lot, see. If you follow some of my um, examples, see if it changes for you. It's a very powerful weapon in staying healthy and being healthy and feeding your microbiome. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week.